16 after 8. The Beatles made their last record together almost 15 years ago, but their giant impact, of course, continues to now. Uh, Joel Siegel and Jeff Greenfield have some thoughts on the musical world the Beatles entered and the world that they left behind. First, Joel. Good morning, Joel. Good morning, David. It happened 20 years ago this weekend, not far from here, at an airport newly named for John F. Kennedy. There was no way to know it then, and what happened didn't happen overnight. The change had been years in coming. And these four young men, and yes, they do look younger than we remember, would change a generation. A generation that would change the world, and no one could have known, no one could have seen. Protests, LSD, the Civil Rights Revolution, the Women's Rights Revolution, a popular president, and no one could have seen. But if you were there that day and listened hard, you could have heard, really anyone could have heard, it was on the radio. It was called Rock and Roll. before the world of music was all shook up. Don't show his hips. What's that he's singing about? I can't understand the words. What kind of name is Elvis? And the unspoken question, why does he sound black? They were dangerous, the rock and roll originals. Elvis and Eddie Cochran and Jerry Lee, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. It's hard to remember how dangerous they were, how different they looked, how different they sounded. But it was the U.S. cavalry to the rescue, the armored cavalry. Shorn like Samson, Elvis would never be the same. Rock and roll had been gritty and real, but scandal hit. Our parents' nightmares came true. Paola hit the DJs, Chuck Berry fought the law, the Man Act, the law won. Jerry Lee Lewis married his cousin, she was 14. He hadn't divorced his past wife. It was time to clean up your act. Jerry Lee Lewis did in this 1960s TV comeback. He sounds like he's singing his latest 45 at 15. It happened in the late 50s. Tin Pan Alley finally embraced rock and roll, smothered it really. They saw gold in them, Mar Hills, gold records, and they created rock and roll heroes and made them squeaky clean. Frankie Avalon, Bobby Vinton, Bobby V. Tim Pinelli created the kind of boys your mom would say, Bobby Sherman got an A in social studies. The kind of boys your dad wanted you to date. In a word, harmless. And so was their music. It was a copy, an imitation. But the real thing was there, bubbling, boiling beneath the surface. Being British, the Beatles didn't know city kids didn't sing country. They didn't know white kids didn't sing black. They recorded Twist and Shout and Chuck Berry and Please Mr. Postman. The Beatles didn't do it all, they just put it all together. The revolution in music and it would be a revolution didn't happen overnight. There was some pretty terrific music being made before we met the Beatles. 20 years later, it's still terrific music. Oh, that's great music, but My Guy, My Boyfriend's Back, Baby Love, Moon June, Spoon, Toon lyrics. The same for the Beatles' first hits, really, I Want to Hold Your Hand, but they would change that. Rubber Soul, Eleanor Rigby, they were singer-songwriters. They changed the music business from a cottage industry out of Times Square in Nashville to a multi-billion dollar international business. They changed music from songs you whispered into someone's ear while you were touch dancing to songs you chanted while you were carrying picket signs. They wrote anthems, they changed our lives. Jeff? Tell me it wasn't 20 years ago. I wish I could. In <laughs> fact, Joel, when I sat in a packed dormitory lounge at the University of Wisconsin 20 years ago and watched the Beatles make their American debut on the Ed Sullivan Show, I knew immediately how important they'd be. As I wrote in the student newspaper, they'll be finished in six months. Well, in fact, this spate of remembrance of their first visit here 20 years ago just shows just how significant the Beatles became because the way they changed reflected not just what was happening to music, but to a generation. first four talented rock and roll performers packaged by manager Brian Epstein with coats and ties 
and with songs purged of that intense sexual energy of early rock and roll. But as the Beatles became superstars, they refused to stand pat. As Paul McCartney said back then, we're so well established, we can bring fans along with us. So the musical harmonies began to grow more complicated. Then the message began to reflect and to reinforce the restlessness and the turmoil of the late 1960s. The four Beatles flirted with the Eastern mysticism on their journey to visit the Maharishi in India. Their hair and their dress grew more colorful and in turn, that helped reshape everything, everything from clothes to commercials to movies. The safe teen sexuality of I Want to Hold Your Hand became radically different. Why don't we do it in the road? And though they denied it, And maybe most important, the Beatles reflected what became a central theme of that brief youth revolution, the belief that community, the spontaneous gesture, the life lived free of all conventions, was really the way to change the world. some of those dreams, the Beatles and the music they advanced, died some very hard debts. Bright clothes and good music wasn't enough. Greed and self-promotion could live very well, it turned out, among blue jeans and tie-dyed shirts and long hair. And the freedom of drugs turned out to be a prison or a grave for an awful lot of people. But for all of the false illusions, the Beatles were a remarkable group, able to go beyond hype and popularity, to take risks, to grow, and to change. One more thing, they made some terrific music. David? Oh, boy. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Joel. It's 24 after 8 right now. Tomorrow, we'll remember the day exactly 20 years ago when the Beatles arrived here in our country. Later in the week, we'll take a look at their early music. Uh, tomorrow here on Good Morning America, we're going to have some cross-country skiing for you. Saturday, I spent several hours up on a mountain in Yugoslavia learning to cross-country ski. We'll have that with you tomorrow. And uh, also, Stephanie Powers with us tomorrow here on Good Morning America. Coming up in our next half hour, Barbara Walters will be with us uh, talking about her special, which is going to be on tonight. She interviews Mr. T and Howard Cosell and Esther Williams, and uh, she will tell us about Esther Williams, who has not been seen in public, uh, at least publicly, professionally, for over 20 years, and uh, it's fascinating to hear about Esther Williams after not having heard from her in quite a while. Good Morning America continues after more news and weather. Hey, you look to see a gun, for tomorrow may rain, so I'll follow the sun. After eight, the Beatles first arrived here 20, go, 20 years ago this week, and as Steve Fox found out, many British music fans knew even then that our gain would be their loss. Liverpool, a city filled with monuments from a better time around the turn of the century, when the banking, insurance, and shipping industries were booming. It also resounds with memories of the time about 30 years ago, when a sound was developing here that would someday change the world of music. All four of the Beatles were born and raised as working-class kids in Liverpool. At the time, about one million people lived here. Many had once worked on the docks and in ships serving the port of Liverpool, which used to be the busiest in Europe.